So I've done the hardest work now. I've done the recap on this Supersonic 22. And I'd say we're about ready for some new tubes and to start testing everything. One thing to note, however, with this one, is that someone's tried to deal with the noise issues. These are a very noisy amp because of how they're laid out and all that kind of jazz. So what they've done is they've put like some kind of you know foil tape over the ribbon connector here. Tried to connect it to ground, but did a very, very poor job of it. And it's done nothing to really lower that noise floor. If you're gonna lower the noise floor on these, then you're gonna have to do some you know, pretty, pretty solid work. So you're gonna have to run some coax in various places and whatnot, deal with the lead dress as best you can. But a lot of it just comes down to the fact that it's laid out the way it is and it's designed the way it is. You can only do so much with these. So I'm gonna clear off all of this here. I'm gonna get some tubes in and then start biasing them up and see how we go. Of course, being a combo amp, the tubes in there get absolutely pummeled by speaker movement. As that air is moving around, it's shaking everything around. That can cause microphonics, that can cause you know elements inside to come close enough to start shorting out. So I quite like the new JJ6V6s with the double mica. Something so simple, but it really does mean that they're less microphonic and they tend to last a bit longer as well. So they've got two pieces of mica up the top here that actually hold the assembly stiff. Helps to minimize any rattles, any noise, anything else like that. So if you're going to change the tubes in something like a Deluxe Reverb or a Princeton or Supersonic 22 or anything like that, I'd highly recommend these. They're not necessary for like head-based amps and similar type stuff where you're gonna be away from the speaker, but if you're gonna be in close proximity to it, definitely worth the you know extra dollar or two that it costs for them. Never trust a serviceman who doesn't have a whole stack of multimeters. Makes things so much easier. So these two multimeters here are actually measuring the voltage drop across each half of the transformer winding. That way we can measure what the actual plate current is going through there without having to you know, use a probe or anything else along those lines. Simple little bit of math makes it oh so much easier. These are a little bit off from each other and according to the math that I've done here, the left tube is at about 55% and the right one's at about 58 and a half. But you know what? That's okay. We don't have to match everything down to like 0.1% and have it absolutely exact because first of all, this is just the quiescent state. So it's not actually, you know, the overall operation across everything. As long as they're roughly matched and they're roughly kind of within a few percent of each other, that's a good thing because it means you get a slight bit of imbalance, which adds a little bit more harmonic flavor, a little bit of difference to the tone, and that way you're not sort of, you know, having having things quite so perfectly in alignment like what you would with, say, for example, a hi-fi amp. Now, if, say, for example, one of these was like idling at 45 and the other one at 60, that's where it gets a little bit problematic because when you push the amp, one side of it is going to go a lot harder and you'll start getting a lot less common mode rejection, therefore you're gonna get more noise. I'm gonna let this burn in for a little bit. I'm gonna connect it up to the dummy load and connect it up to a signal generator, and let it go for a while. And then once I'm sure that it's all nice and stable, I'm gonna plug up, test it out and see how it sounds. So what we can see here is we can see a big, fat, clean sine wave. So we're pumping out about 12.8 volts RMS into an 8 ohm load, which means 12.8 squared divided by 8. That's how we do our calculations. We're getting about 20 and a half watts at very, very minimal clipping, if any. If I push that higher, of course, you know, getting up to about 14 volts all up and that's gonna push us over that 22 watt range. That's at full, absolute maximum tilt, which is a good thing. That means that this amp is in a pretty happy and healthy state, which is what we wanna see. If we change over to the dirty channel now, make sure the EQ's up right and where it needs to be. There we go. So we can see that waveform there. We'll get a little bit of, little bit of noise on the pots that I turn it up, so they'll have to be cleaned. But if I push the gain up, there we go. Got a fair whack of gain right there. Pull it down. There we go. Because these have two gain controls that are basically sort of different parts of the circuit. One earlier, one later. So you can dial it in, but same sort of deal. Pulling that 14 odd volts out. 
So we're getting like 25-ish watts at full tilt. I haven't even pushed the, there we go. Push it up right into maximum clip. <laughs> so we're changing channel well enough, which is good. Awesome. So the next part, of course, like I said, plug it up, put it back in its cabinet and see what it sounds like. All in all, I reckoned this is probably about ready to head back to the owner. simple repair these look they're a complex amp they have some known issues thankfully this one was relatively easy to sort out and you know it doesn't sound that bad all in all definitely not Fender's strongest point these amps but undoubtedly I will see more of these in the future as I've already seen you know, plenty of them over the years now if you're looking to get some gear repaired of course here in Sydney come down and pay me a visit otherwise if you just want to hear me talking shit See what I have to think about stuff, see me tear down things, see me fix stuff, don't forget to like, subscribe, share it around, hit the bell notification icon, and of course, you can of course sign up to, you know, the memberships here because I do some cool little things here including, you know, Q&As, helping with technical troubleshooting and all that jazz, and some other fun bits and pieces. Check out the live streams of course coming up, and until the next time, I'll see ya. <laughs>